Thank you. Well, thank you for introducing me. Good afternoon. We are going to talk a little bit about DNS, and the question in the presentation is, what uh, on earth is DNS doing now? Well, actually, we all, almost all of us, implement our own servers, but very often we don't know what they're doing. That is, we use them, on a, and we know that they are responding, but actually we don't have an idea of what's happening inside that daemon. The purpose of this presentation is, on the one hand, to invite you each uh, to implement your own DNS, your recursive and authoritative servers, and on the other hand, try to implement this way for monitoring the DNS with which you can have different metrics in real time. What type of DNSs do we have? Usually they are two types, recursive and authoritative. What happens with the recursive? Um, well, usually small providers or medium-sized providers start operating with the DNSs that we all know that are public. And in the networks, they use those DNSs for their clients. And what they start as something that is left to implement later, that is typically never done. So the providers give the public DNSs to their customers. That is sort of outsourcing the service, and we lose control of what the clients do because all the queries go to the recursive DNSs. And we also have don't have so much monitoring capacity, and we can't see the traffic that we need sometimes to solve problems. On the other hand, those queries or those, if we have mail servers, are remarkably increase because, for instance, if we have a mail server and we want to implement an anti-spam system, we are going to have a system, for instance, as BMARC that needs a certain resolution for the ESPF mechanism, another resolution for the Kim mechanism, another if we have a blacklist service. Uh, I, I, an IP blacklist that we wanted to filter. Another resolution with the in reverse uh, DNS in the case of IPv6 for e each mail that comes in, we have to ask the recursive five questions. So here we have four recursive uh, DNSs, uh, a public re recursive DNSs. What do they offer? the best known. On the one hand, they are robust. They are implemented by leading companies uh, in the field of the internet. And what they do is they make it difficult if we um, send a query. It's hard for it not to be responded or for it to fail. On the other hand, it's easy to remember. That is, at least in IPv4, right away. We learned them by heart because it was, you say, well, I want uh, to use a DNS to send a query to public. Those IPs are easy to remember, not so much in IPv6, but in IPv4, yes. And on the other hand, we operate networks, and it is good because we can uh, consult our zones when we make changes and we send queries to these servers that are going to respond as if it were an external query. And with that, we ensure that our zones are well configured. In the case of the authoritative, uh, we know it, they are used mostly for our own zones that we want to administer in our domain or whatever domains we have. And also, it's a requirement by the RIRs when they delegate uh, IPs, we can respond in reverse to the, those IP addresses. Our own zones are um, 
in direct, and each zone has associated registries. That is well known. And on the other hand, many uh, use their DNSSEC, sign their zones, and that provides security for name resolution. It ensures an additional tier, uh, a security tier. This is also hired out, and many uh, that don't have recursive servers don't have authoritative servers either. If we wish to implement an, uh, our own infrastructure, what do we need? Well, what we are going to need is two recursive servers, two authoritative servers. Those servers, the recursive servers will be available for the IP address blocks uh, in four and six for our clients. And what we'll try to do there is not to leave them open so that you, the, you can all only be queried from our IP addresses, that is, our users. And on the other hand, we need one more server to implement DNSSEC, that is the server that is hidden or called, but signs the zones and transfers them. The scheme would be sort of this, something common, and usually this would be the typical thing. There we see the DNS, that is the master, it signs the zone, and the two authoritative servers that you see in the internet are secondary servers of the DNSSEC, of the server that you see as the master that is a cult. And on the other hand, we have the recursive ones that our users use, and only enabled for our networks. So far, we have this is the basic infrastructure. Now, let's go to see how we can measure. There are several ways you can measure. Usually, it can be done in the interface of the DNS. We can capture traffic. We can save it in uh, PK uh, files. This is used, and, and then uh, this is used more for research than real time. We can have an IP fix exporter, and we can also have a system including the uh, Elasticsearch, um, Kibana, and Logstash, and with that, we can organize the logs. And with and also, a very good thing that we have used is Domainman, that is an Atlas RIPE process uh, project, and especially for authoritative zones, it keeps a log. And we can see it online. It's very good. What, Im what uh, did we implement? Well, what we did was to take advantage of the statistics already given by the servers, both bind and uh, uh, born are servers that have statistics that are available, but uh, usually we don't uh, look at them. We don't know how to get the data. What we need to do is to enable the bind statistics channel, and then we use a software that's called Prometheus that it's available in the internet. All oh, this is open source, so you can implement it. And there is an exporter that comes for Bind and for other DNS servers. And we also install a collector. That collector, also in Prometheus, will centralize all the statistics that we can then plot. Prometheus has a plotter. We use one that is a bit more dynamic that is called Grafana that makes it possible for you to see as if it were the statistics of the DNS as if it were a metric. How does this work? Okay, well, Bind exports its statistics in a port, makes it available, and Prometheus exports, uh, takes the data and makes them available in another port for someone to extract it. Who extracts that information as a pool? It's the collector. And the collector, in turn, that is in another machine, makes it available locally in the port, for instance, in this case, 1990, so that Grafana can take it, and finally, we can see it. Usually, Grafana, we access in the 
Ah, in the port. Well, bind in the latest version, 1925. Uh, uh, now, we have uh, 17, has a lot of information that is divided into uh, um, uh, sections. The current one is 916.25. Well, it depends on the kind of server that we have and that we want to plot. Usually, we can see it if we draw a card to that port to 8053, we will have that information in XML format, and we can also have it in JSON format. For instance, this is the exit, and we filter through one of these uh, uh, sessions, in this case, the statistics of this zone. And what we can see is that we have report of notifications, uh, the uh, zones that were uh, uh, consulted and more information available and the SOAS that were queried. So, in this here, all this information, I'll be able to see it in Grafana. And how do we see it? Well, like this. That information with a dashboard that we can download from the internet. We can see how our DNS is working. We see the time that it is the daemon is working in the CPU. In this case, it gives information of when it was booted and when it was reconfigured. In this case, they coincide because it's the same. And then we have information that is typical of the system and the daemon. That is, how many files it has open, what's the memory that it's consuming. Then we can see the various registries, the logs that are consulted. These are entry queries. And here you have, uh, say, that it's no longer used, but and it is in the dash dashboard, and we can see all the types of queries possible, and we plot them, and we get a metric based on time. Sometimes we see numbers, and it's hard to understand them, but if we see a graph, it's much easier. This is a case of one of the recursive servers that it was assumed that DNSSEC was enabled and it was making queries. However, when we looked at the chart, the validation didn't show anything. So we went to config and it was not enabled. So we enabled it, we restarted, rebooted it, and it started giving the queries of DNSSEC. And finally, this is a resolver. And very often, we wonder, what happens if we reboot a DNS server? Do we lose the information? Do we lose the cache? Indeed. Here you see it. The data that we had get lost. And when you restart it again, it starts saving the uh, data in the cache so it will be available for other queries in the same log. Unbound, Unbound is another resolver that you can use, and it's very good because it's very light, and uh, it has a very good performance. And in addition, the configuration is quite user-friendly, quite simple. It has several um, features. And the most important thing is it also supports statistics. It provides information that we can obtain and then plot. And there is an issue that is important that we need to see, those of us who operate the DNS, uh, uh, that is the new options for queries, and including DNS over TLS or over HTTPS. And we also have DNS over Quick and well, and there are others that are being studied. And I think that there 
we still have a lot of work to do because it would be good to start implementing these servers and see how we can get information, how they work, because at present there are only proxies that make it possible to make queries of this kind. And also the public servers that we just saw have um, uh, features to uh, uh, ask queries and to resolve under these protocols. Unbound also brings many ways you can monitor. You can use CACTI or Moonin. In this case, we have 12 porters that we can use. We use the one underneath O2 that we can use, and you can also download a dashboard to visualize it. Here you have an example. How do we get the information? In this case, it's a query type, and we can use our own command, and we obtain the registry, the types of logs that were queried, uh, A, P, D, R, M, X, uh, similar to what bind does. The only thing that changes is the format of the panel of the dashboard. And in this case, we, we can know how many queries we had, how many per second. It uh, develops a histogram of the time of response. And this is interesting because it's the number of hits, the number of queries that it found versus the ones that were he had to go and go look out. Well, unbound, we run it as a recursive server. And the information that we just saw is similar. We have the logs, types of queries, and also the errors. Sometimes it's interesting to see whether we have many errors because a tip, this is a typical case of attacks that we see that the query comes to our domain. However, yet the name before it is poorly, is ill-formed. It doesn't have the appropriate characters, so all these queries will fail. And that is what increases the uh, flaws that we can see in some of these graphs. So finally, The ideal thing is to be able to have our own infra DNS infrastructure, other authoritative or recursive. That implies that we won't uh, outsource it. You won't, they won't take our own information that's going to be solved by a third party. And then the other is know what those DNSs do, because usually we are watching the bandwidth because the bandwidth it's important because it uh, uh, the economy of the provider depends on it but because there are services such as mail or if we have packing hosted and if we give hosting services if we look at the statistics of the queries that we have of the HTTPS servers this is quite a simple way and an interesting way to see the metrics to see how our name servers evolve. Then that metric um, we implemented with uh, Grafana and Prometheus, two very interesting tools. And you, Prometheus is all in Gola language and Go. So it's interesting, and you can develop things from here. And the idea of this implementation is to have a complement of the ones that you may have in your site and have something complementary that may enable me to see things quickly. So that would be the conclusion. Thank you, Santiago. I loved your presentation. I don't know whether anybody here has any questions for Santiago. Uh, 
Good afternoon. I'm Wesley Together. Thank you for your presentation. That was excellent. Many years For many years, I haven't used Bind for recursive service. I have usually used Unbound. And I'd like to know whether you have any data comparing Bind and Unbound as recursive servers in the same scenario, the same implementation, the same hardware, the same number of, of customers, which performs better. What is your experience if you have? Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. Actually, we have um, unbound only in mail servers, SMTP or in an MX. We don't use it in the network. However, based on what we've seen, we've tried to see the time of response, and it seems to be faster. But Bind is also reliable. It's been broadly used. Um, so any of the two, and you also have Canout and uh, some others that can be tested. Maybe you might experiment the part of HTTP, the NS over HTTPS. It might be interesting to see how it works in Ambon, because Bind hasn't implemented it yet. I think that Bind only implements on TLS. Thank you. I have a question online. We are fully hybrid. Alejandro Cruz says, good afternoon, excellent presentation. I'm Alejandro Cruz from Mexico, and I'm interested in implementing this tool. Are there any manuals for uh, in installation? And I, I imagine it's the whole snag, uh, Grafana. Yes. If, if you go, all the links are in the presentation. Sorry. I left it in the conclusions uh, because of a matter of time, but in the exporters, you have all the information of how to implement that part that is very personal. And then in Prometheus, you have a lot of information in the website.